Hello everyone, this is Simon from pack to live um, Today I'm doing a quick video on how to pitch up in the dark. Uh, basically, the winter is here, at least in England, uh, and obviously Northern Hemisphere. So autumn, winter's getting here, the days are getting darker much earlier, and the chances of you arriving at a pitch site and it being pitch black are much greater now than they were several months ago when the days were getting darker later. Anyway, so, uh, the first thing is, of course, I've made it to my pitch site. Now, let's suggest that you, you've made it to your pitch site either in the dwindling light or that you've been there during the day and simply not pitched up, which obviously would be a big mistake. Uh, you should pitch up, preferably, in the daylight. So, this is just if you get caught out and you have to pitch up in the dark. Now, uh, just to give you some idea as to the setup that I've got going on here, I've got no visible light available to me. I've got a little bit of light from the sky, um, and then there's a tiny red glow from the infrared emitter for this night vision camera, but that, that doesn't illuminate anything around me. You can see, because of the night vision, I can't very well. I've got very, very limited visibility. So um, you've got an advantage. Now, I'm going to be pitching up the small tarp that I carry with me in my ribs pack, which is here. Uh, and my hammock. Now, because it's not raining tonight, I think I'm going to pitch the hammock up, or at least get the hammock line suspended first. So we'll uh, we'll do that now, shall we? Okay, so I believe I'm off camera at the moment, but the first thing we need to do is to pace out our site and get a feel for whether or not it's going to be big enough to accommodate our hammock and tarp. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just pacing it out. I know where the tree is. I can just see it in front of me. Here it is. Okay, just going to walk back the other way, just to make sure. Okay, yeah, this is definitely big enough. So, um, I know that there's, there's enough space here. I also know that there's another tree here, but I think that it's just far enough out of the way that it shouldn't be an issue. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pitch the hammock first, I think, because it's dry. Okay, so I'm pitching up my Warbonnet Blackbird. I've paced the site as you saw, and I know that the trees are far enough apart to take it. Uh, I'm That's the foot end. I can feel that this, because I have a rubberized tape on the D-rings, you can probably see this, I can't, I can't see a goddamn thing really, but there's a rubberized tape on the head end, and the fact that that's not got any rubberized tape on it tells me that's the foot end. That's good, that's the end I want down this side. I've pulled out my first tree strap because I needed to be sure they were there, and they are because I thought I'd forgotten them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the tree strap around the tree, and I'm doing most of this by feel, okay? That's the thing to remember is it's really dark here. You, you can see I really can't. So uh, I can just see where the camera is because of the infrared emitter. So you have a massive advantage over me, uh, but I'm going to try and feel my way around this tree. Pretty good idea where the tree is. There it is. Okay. okay I hope that's high enough up, but not too high. Now this is where daytime practice comes really in handy. If you practice pitching up during the day, you'll get used to just doing it by feel. Now I'm pretty sure this tree strap is going to drop when I let go of it. We don't really want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is apply a bit of tension to it. That feels about right. And now, making sure that's my, that's my head end. So I've got to withdraw my whoopee sling now. There it is. I might as well have my eyes closed at this point because I really, it's the clouds are coming in and whatever nighttime light I'm getting is just disappearing. Is that the adjustable? Yeah, that's the adjustable thing. Where's the, uh, there it is. Okay, there's the, there's the, uh, uh, a open loop of the whoopee sling. Now, I don't think that's long enough, so I'm pinching and making it a bit longer. Okay, now, at this point, I need to begin 
on the other end, the head end of the hammock. Okay, so at this point now I've got the foot end suspended on the whoopee sling. I can feel that's good. There's the hammock. I'm nowhere near the middle because I know that the hammock is compressed into the bishop's bag. So what I have to do now is begin extending the hammock from the bag and taking it over to the other tree. I've got to rotate the camera again because you won't be able to see the other tree in the other side of the process. So I'll do that now and then we'll cut back. Okay. So just as before, I'm going to take the tree strap out, if I can find it, there it is. And then I'm going to withdraw the whoopee sling, pull the bishop's bag slightly tight. So it basically, it is just a matter of feeling your way along and trusting, trusting your hands rather than your eyes. Now, feels about right. Okay, when I let go of this, it's going to start withdrawing the hammock from the bag. I'm hoping you've got all this all on frame, but the hammock won't touch the floor if I do everything right. Now, here's where I have to shut up because I'm going to put the whoopee sling in my mouth and put the tree strap around the tree. Okay. Oh, so I felt that slip. Okay, that's sitting very low. So I'm going to tighten that up. But I think I need to adjust some on the other end, so I'm going to feel my way along and I'll do the tightening on the other end as well. Let's ratchet that way up. Okay. Okay. So I've just got to withdraw the bishop's bag from this side and pull it tight. I have to say, it is an absolutely spectacular night. It's warmer now than it was in the summer. The wind is... There's a wind, definite wind. You can probably pick up on the microphone a little bit. But the temperature is absolutely spectacular. I could spend the night out here probably with well, maybe even without uh, a sleeping bag or, or even a, bi a bivy bag, a little bivy bag. But um, I'd be happy spending the night out here with my little SOL escape that I keep in the ribs pack. Anyway, moving on. Now I know that I have to go up to the head end, which obviously to my right, camera left, and uh, I have to suspend the two lines, the one for the opening side and the one for the closing side thing is, my pegs for those are in with my tarp, which is in here, so I better get that out now and get the pegs for those. So it's really a case of just inching your way along, being very careful, taking a lot more time over it, making sure you don't put anything on the floor, because in the dark, especially if you have no flashlight, anything you put down, you basically you've lost it until daylight. Now, obviously, if it's something you don't immediately need and you lose it on the, on the floor until the daylight comes up and you can see again, it's no big deal. But if you drop your shelter down and you can't find it, you're exposed for the night. So that, that would obviously be a bad thing. Okay, but I've got my tarp in my hand. That's the pocket end, I think. Yeah, that's definitely the pocket. So I'm going to take one, two... Let's see if you can see this, and then I can check it later, but I think that's two. This is where I really start to cringe, because if I lose these, these are very expensive titanium pegs. It's the only tarp that I carry with titanium pegs. Uh, if I lose these pegs, they are very expensive to replace. Okay, so I'm going to rotate the camera around, hopefully get a shot of the head end of the hammock, and then we'll, we'll carry on. Now, I have a small confession to make at this point, is when I'm reorienting my camera, I'm using the viewfinder on the camera, and therefore the night vision, to see that I've lined the shot up, and that actually is giving me a little bit of an advantage. So I'm not going to claim to be doing this in with no insight at all. Obviously, the viewfinder is helpful when I'm between shots realigning it. But while I'm over here doing the work, I genuinely can't see. Okay, I mean... You, you may be able to see a lot with that emitter because it's very powerful, but I can't see a goddamn thing. So I'm doing it all by feel, um, and there is a very low amount of glow out here, which takes me a second to get back after I look away from the camera. But it is dark, okay? It's as dark as, as one would expect it to be at, in these weather conditions with a little bit of cloud cover and in, in a night time in the autumn. Okay, 
So we'll crack on. <laughs> oh yes, here's here's a little bit of a disadvantage for myself is that I've got my lines wrapped around. <laughs> oh boy, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to undo this. Basically, I tie my my uh, guy outlines for the hammock off around the hammock. Christ, uh, to stop it from just unfurling. And now, now I've got to stand here in the dark and try and figure out how I've done this and undo it. So that's a big disadvantage for me. So loop normally goes over the top. Problem is, every time I undo something, if it's not the right way, I have to do it back again. Oh boy, I really can't. Uh, oh, I think I've got it, I think I've got it, I think I've got it. Yes, that's one. Now where's the other one? Should be able to find it. Uh, hang on, hang on. Yes, I've got them. I've got them both. Brilliant. Okay, so that's where a consistent packing style is is massively important. If you pack down the same way every time, then you have an, a good idea as to where everything is and how you've packed it, and therefore how to undo it. And I'm doing this entirely by feel. I can just see the glow on the edge of the the white bits of this cord, but other than that, it's it's just shit. Excuse my language. I think that's right. I think that's right. Please, please don't be snagging up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> if I screw this up now, I'm, I'm in quite a bit of trouble because because I really got to spend the night out here. <laughs> I'm not hiking home with all my gear in the middle of the night on this road. No way. Okay. Now yeah, then, there's a loop somewhere. There it is. Okay, so I've got the loop. Oh boy, yep, yep, that's great. I've got one peg. So I'm just going to walk out now, find the peg spot, and peg it in. That's that's really easy to do by feel. You just sort of step back. We've got to open a fallen hole. Uh, right, there's a hole there, but... Okay, that peg's in. Oh yeah, we've got this tree on the other side, I think, haven't I? Right, so I'm going to go around the back. Yeah. Now this other line that I've got, keep in mind, still got my tarp in my hand. I think there's a tree. That's a tree. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this off around the tree. Okay, I think that'll, yep, that'll hold. Okay, great. Please hold. Please hold. Okay. So now, let's have a feel. It all stood on my line. Okay. Okay. So that's the shelf side, definitely. The zip's around the other side, but there's even less light. And now is where I would put the tarp over the top. And to be honest, I don't even think I should bother, but I suppose it's, it's overcast, so I might as well. I should just point out what little moonlight there is is coming from behind the camera. So my best orientation for what minimal visibility I have is to look towards the camera when I'm doing something. It's another actual reason why I've pitched my head end over here so that I can see toward the moon. There we go. Okay. Oh boy, everything's snagging up. I think that's right. Okay, here we go. Dropping the tarp towards the floor, but I still have the ridge line. So I'm not losing control of the tarp. I've got to go over the top of the hammock. Oh, right. There's the small end of my figure eight. So I'm using a figure eight, a uh, figure of eight, or figure nine, sorry, um, instead of a knot on this. A knot would be just as easy to do blind as as a figure eight. Probably easier actually. Uh, okay, that. Feels like it's going to hold. That's my hammock strap. Okay, and now I've got a line in the way, but I can't friggin' see it, so... That's the thing. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to step over my line. And then... The occasional car headlight does help a little bit. Uh, no, that is not the ridge line. <laughs> That's too thick for the ridge line. That has to be a guy line. 
Ah, there's a figure nine. That's, yep, that's my ridge line. Okay. Now, I normally tie a knot off at the inner strand side, so there has to be a knot round the... There it is. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Brilliant. So, yeah, the, the way you hank your lines, literally everything comes down to being able to feel what you remember doing during the day. So that's my ridge line, ridge line, ridge line, ridge line. I'm, I'm still got hold of my ridge line, so even though I've let go of the hammock, I still have hold of my ridge line, so I don't lose it. Also, of course, I can trace it back to the other tree using the hammock, and then trace the ridge line back down to the to the top. So once you've got it suspended and you're sure that it's locked off around a tree, letting go of it to an extent is not a huge issue. That's my figure nine. Okay, I'm going to walk around the tree, which is here. This figure nine is probably needs sliding down. There we go. Ugh. No, that's not tight. That doesn't feel right. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. I think that, yeah, that's it. That's it. So at this point, my tarp is still inside the bishop's bag. I've suspended the ridge line. It's a bit crude, but it will work very well. Um, and I can always try and tension it up on either end after the fact. Now I've got to do the actual unfurling of the tarp, the pitching along the ridge, and then I've got to suspend the four points. That's actually quite difficult to do in the dark because you can't see a good angle from the tarp or how the tarp is is uh, creasing or folding as you're pulling the guy lines away. But I'll show you how I deal with that as best I can, at least in the dark. The thing to remember is that having a perfect pitch when you're setting up in darkness is not necessarily critical. Now, if it were, say, a blizzard coming, then it would be a lot more important to get it as right as you can, because any ridge that you leave, any fold or, or crease, is, is just going to invite snow to pool up, and eventually it will probably collapse on you. But uh, on a night like tonight, there's, there's no bad weather. This is beautiful weather, actually. It doesn't get more ideal than this. That is my spare. This is the hard part. Actually, the hardest part for me with my tarp is separating the prussic. It's on here somewhere. There it is. Okay. My tarp itself is still wet from the last time I packed it down, but it feels wet anyway. No, that's not it. That's it. There it is. Okay, there's the end of the hammock. So this tarp sits there. There's a line comes out over here. So I have to be careful. Okay. There it is. Okay, that's pitched over there. Now, oh, that's really wet. I can actually see light shimmering off the, uh, the wet patches. Anyway, right. Now I have to find my bishop's bag. There's my bishop's bag. Okay. Okay, so with the tarp unfurled on the ridge line, wet though it may be, it comes down to the guy lines. Now I leave my guy lines connected to the four corners of this tarp. Uh, I recommend that because first of all, I know where these lines are now. I don't have to dig through a bag to find them and then try and connect them or tie knots or anything special like that. I just know where they are. They are already connected to my tarp. The other thing is using the, uh, figure of eight over thumb and little finger method to pack them down means I can just pull the line and it comes unfurled. I also have a permanently fixed, and I know some people disagree with it, but I retie them every now and then, uh, permanently fixed special knot, which is a, my own variation of the rolling hitch or the Magnus hitch, that uh, makes it easy to adjust the guy line. Now the beauty is it's also very thick. You can feel where the two strands join to one. There it is. So I know my knot is, is, is right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is find the bishop's bag and pull out a peg and then show you how I try and gauge an angle from the ridge line for the top guy lines for the four corners. Just 
It's just one, isn't it? Yeah, it's one. Okay. So what I'm, I'm, you'll note that I'm having to close the peg bag yeah, thoroughly after each peg comes out because I can't afford to lose any of these pegs. I only have the exact number that I need to peg out this, this tarp and hammock setup. They're also ridiculously expensive. Um, that's not bad. I did that by feel. So I could feel the holes in the peg. And obviously I know where the end of my line is because I've run my fingers down to the end of it. So I've been able to do that. Now I can feel that that's the inside of the V on the peg. So I want to tie my knot to the inside of the V. There we are. That's two, two overhand knots. So just a double overhand knot which perfectly will hold right now. That's the inner tape. Where's the bottom? There it is. There's the bottom corner tape. So we come to the bottom corner tape. Now, trace the side of the tarp up to the ridge line. Place your hand there. You now have a straight line between your two hands. Pull your, because this tarp isn't so wide when it's unfurled, I can actually feel where the corner, uh, I can, basically I can tension it from corner to ridge. So that's now tense. So I now know that I need to go this way to get a 45 degree angle off it. So if I try and keep it about there, I think, keep it taut about there. You, I might go off camera. I think I've gone off camera, but all I'm doing is pegging the corner out as far from the hammock as possible. That feels good. That feels pretty good. So I'm just going to follow the line up. I should point out, these are also glow-in-the-dark lines. Now, they, they're glowing very dimly, obviously, because it's a night vision camera, you're going to be able to see them put pure as daylight anyway, but th these are glow-in-the-dark lines, which does help a great deal. Um, this isn't a stealth camp. Admittedly, I'm on my woodland, and I think I may, actually. I'm pretty sure I'm on my normal pitch, which just shows you how good it is to survey and recce an area in daylight plenty of times, and then you know where everything is when you come to it in the dark. It's very helpful. See, because that tree behind my hammock, I, I know I've used it before several times, and I think it's exactly the same tree. I think these are the same trees, and this is my typical normal pitch. Now, I've got to say, that is actually a coincidence. I didn't deliberately walk into this woodland and find my pitch. That would actually be quite hard for me to do in the dark. Um, I just seem to have gravitated <laughs> towards it. Maybe I recognise the features with the trees or something, but I did, for some reason I've ended up at my normal pitch. All I wanted was two trees that were far enough apart with no obstructions in between. Um, anyway, so that's worked in my favour. Okay, so that looks like, feels like, or whatever, it, it, it seems like that's going to be a good taut pitch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and do the other four corners, and then we'll step back and we'll take a, a take, you can take a look, I can't, but We'll step the camera back and take a look at the whole thing and see what you think. Okay? So I'll be back in a minute. Also, feel free to let me know what you think of this night vision uh, equipment and how the quality is on the video and so on. Uh, because I actually made this night vision, or I should say modified uh, a camera to be my night vision camera custom. So I've done this myself. Um, so I, I only spent about 65 quid on the entire rig. Probably, no, maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe 70 including shipping. But... So let me know what you think of that as well. Anyway, let's go and do these other corners. So there we go. From tree to tree. That tarp is now very much pitched over the hammock. As you can see, my guy lines... Wow, you really can see very clearly on this night vision. That's very good. Yeah, it's a car in the background. Sorry about that. Okay, so I have pitched that in the dark. Um, the only time I've had light was the occasions when I've come over to do the viewfinder, but really I've literally only been able to use that for um, for for making sure the camera was reason, reasonably aligned with where I'm shooting. Hopefully I've got everything. Okay, so all four corners are pegged out. That tarp is pretty damn taut. It's wet, but it's taut. And the hammock is, is very good underneath it. First of all, every time I've gone to do a peg out, to peg a corner or or whatever you, I've, um, I've been carefully shuffling one foot ahead of the other to see if there are any branches or holes or anything there that would trip me over. So I'm w moving very cautiously to make sure that I don't uh, injure myself. Okay, that's more important even on a place that you haven't wreckied uh, in daylight because you don't know, you simply don't know what's there. But even if you've wreckied it, a branch may have come down, a whole tree may have come down, you may not know. Um, now, why would I why would I pitch in the dark? Well, first of all, I should point out 
Uh -huh, I don't. <laughs> I've left it over on with my kit. I have a flashlight with me. I've left it with my Bergen. But that's beside the point. Okay, so I do come out with a flashlight, but my batteries could run out, or it could get lost, or somebody could steal it. And I could find myself facing a pitching in the dark situation like this. And the other reason for pitching in the dark may well be that you simply do not want to draw any attention to yourself. You, you, for whatever reason, there's, you know, it could be some kind of survival scenario where, where there are, um, hazards where if you get spotted, you could potentially be injured or killed. So there's that to consider. But it could simply be that you're stealth camping. And if you have a flashlight on, you think it might attract a bit too much unwanted attention. So pitching in the dark there and knowing how to pitch in the dark and a log, being able to feel your way around and do this in the dark is a good thing. Uh, it's not something you should do if you have an alternative. It has risks. It probably won't be as good as a daylight pitch. Uh, and of course, you probably won't have a handy night vision viewfinder to just occasionally check and just to make sure that everything looks good on camera. Otherwise, it's pretty much like pitching in the daytime. You're just doing it by feel. It's a case of practice, practice, practice. The more you know your equipment, the way you pack it, and the way you, you deploy it, the easier this will be. The more you practice that, the easier and easier it will become. I know how everything feels. I know where everything's supposed to be. I know where all my lines go. I know all the knots uh, and how to do them blindly. So that's basically how this is done. There is no great magic trick to it. It is just a case of feeling your way through it. It takes time, it takes a bit longer than doing a, a daylight pitch. Um, obviously, if I had my sleeping bag and so on to put in, knowing which way my hammock is oriented, I'd be able to just open it up, feel through my bag until I my Bergen, which is over there, feel through the Bergen, pull out my sleeping bag, pull out my inflating mat, find the bits, just all by feel. So it's all very tactile. Um, technically, a blind person can pitch a tarp and hammock if they have enough practice. Anyway, I hope you find this information useful. I hope you never have to do it, uh, just because it's awkward and a bit dangerous and, you know, but I hope you never have to do it. But if you do have to do it, hopefully maybe there's a few tips you've picked up along with this video that uh, might just make the experience easier for you. Obviously, uh, a night vision camera is a damn sight more helpful, <laughs> but not everybody has one. Um, if you have any questions, feel free. To, uh, please don't forget that you can, uh, if you wish, support uh, these videos and, and the maintaining of the equipment and so on uh, through our Patreon campaign. The link's in the description of this and every other video that we do. Uh, you don't have to, but if you, if you do, it's very much appreciated. Um, and until I see you again, or until you see me again, thanks for watching.